Okay, so if there are no questions, let me begin. Okay, so uh, so let's start with, uh, by discussing the last quiz. Um, so um, the first question was about uh, whether certain modules uh, or, or certain Z modules are Noetherian or not. Yeah. So uh, so we know that uh, Z modules uh, an R module is Noetherian if and only if it's finitely generated if R is a Noetherian ring. And Z being a PID, it's sort of, uh, it is Noetherian. It's every ideal is in fact singly generated. So uh, basically it's checking whether the, whether the modules, the, the Z modules we have given is are finitely generated or not. So of course, uh, if you look at the polynomial ring, then uh, it's far from finitely generated, right? So one X, X squared and so, uh, so on, this will form a basis. So, so it can't be finitely generated. Right? If you, in fact, if you take any finitely many polynomials, then you can't, uh, this Z linear combination of those polynomials can't give you um, a polynomial of degree greater than the maximum of uh, these degrees. So it's not Noetherian. Then uh, Zx mod x square minus one. Uh, so there are many ways of seeing it. Uh, so first thing is uh, Zx mod x square minus one is uh, is basically one comma x. Yeah? So it's uh, generated by it um, one comma x. It's also a free module and it's generated by one comma x bar. And uh, or you can by Chinese remainder theorem you can factorize x square minus one as x minus one times x plus one and uh, then show that it's isomorphic to z plus z. Uh, so either way uh, you get that uh, this is finitely generated yeah, group. Now, so yeah, actually z modules are same as finitely uh, uh, as abelian group. So you just have to check whether it's a finitely generated. And this happens to be finitely generated. And finally, zx mod 2x minus 1. So this uh, is not finite. It is, as we know, it's isomorphic to z half uh, by what we've seen in the class. And this is not, uh, again, not Noetherian because it's not finitely generated. Uh -huh. Or uh, you can say, you know, so some people, for instance, said consider the uh, submodules uh, um, half C and uh, sub, uh, uh, submodule half times C and uh, yeah, half times Z and uh, uh, one fourth times Z and so on. Yeah, so it's an increasing chain of uh, submodules. So half integers, um, integers, uh, 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 one fourth integers, one one uh, eighth integers, and so on. So this will be you know, increasing uh, chain of submodules, and they won't have a, uh, and it will never stop. Yeah. So strictly increasing chain of sub uh, uh, chain of increasing chain of modules. Or you can do this. Yeah, so uh, so pretty straightforward. And uh, the second question was about uh, this module. Uh, the first component is the ideal generated uh, uh, ideal in R generated by two comma x. The second one is the ideal generated by two, the principal ideal generated by two. Uh, the third one is the quotient of these two modules, two comma x mod uh, two. The fourth one is. Uh, R mod uh, the submodule two comma x. The fifth one is uh, home as two comma q x. Yeah, so so this should be I linear map. I think the question in the question it was uh, an I linear map. Yeah, so I linear maps from R, the free module R two to q x. So and q x is uh, naturally a z x module. Uh, z x is containing q x and q x has a natural z z x module. Action. So in that respect, and then you have to compute the torsion of this and the uh, rank of this. So torsion means uh, um, uh, all m in m such that r dot m is zero, and then you just uh, 
see what it means. So uh, in that this uh, is a five tuple, so five tuple of elements such that this is uh, zero for some for some are not equal to zero. Yeah, and A, B, C, D, E are in these uh, these modules. So of course, Zx is a integral domain. So R times A is zero, and R is not uh, zero, in, uh, and A is in Two comma x, which is again a su subset of R. Yeah, so that implies A must be zero, and similarly B must be zero. And uh, uh, so, and uh, this home R square Q x you have to realize is same as home R plus R Q x, which is uh, which we have seen in the class is isomorphic to home R Q x plus home R Q x. So maybe this was a homework problem, or probably we saw it in the class one or the other. And then home RQX we know is isomorphic to QX, yeah. Basically F going to F F1, F evaluated at one. That was the isomorphism. So so this complicated looking object is just QX plus QX. And uh, and the action is also uh, the usual thing, yeah. So it's multiplication uh, and component wise multiplication. So that also you can verify. Since uh, z is an integral domain, you get a equals zero, b equals zero, c is some number, uh, some element of this, d is some element of this, e is some element of this, such that uh, for some r non-zero, r times c is zero, r times d is zero, and r times e is zero in qx plus q. And again, uh, now note that uh, if you multiply c by uh, c is some element here, yeah, two comma x mod modulo two. So the submodule two comma x modulo uh, for the submodule two. So if you multiply c by two, then of course um, uh, it, it will land in uh, uh, it will become zero. Yeah. So and similarly, if you multiply d also by two or x, then it will become zero. So you take r to be two, for instance, then that tells you that uh, every element uh, in this thing becomes torsion. So you get um, that um, uh, uh, you can take C and D to be any guy. And, uh, and for E, note that R times E is never going to be zero unless E is zero. Yeah. Uh, same reason, yeah, because uh, if you take a polynomial in, uh, in, uh, in QX, uh, uh, you take an element of QX plus QX, so let's say G comma H, then r times dot g comma h is same as r times g comma r times h, and both are zero means uh, and since r is non-zero element of zx, that means g must be zero or h must be zero. Yeah. So everything you think of it in in qx, yeah? even that is an integral domain. So that tells you that e is zero. So taking and uh, taking two to be the element of r cross, you see that uh, is zero no matter what c and d are. So you get that uh, torsion, torsion submodule of M is isomorphic to, so it has only these two components, and this and this, the two which has quotients. Yeah. So the torsion module is precisely this. And then the rank is four, yeah, because uh, the torsion part has rank uh, uh, one, one, so I didn't really uh, write the justification here. Uh, and uh, we know that S in, uh, if you take S to be, R minus zero, and then S inverse of uh, M is uh, first of all isomorphic to S, in, uh, S inverse of each of them, and then taking the direction. So S inverse of uh, two comma uh, X. So this uh, of course is uh, going to be uh, up cross S inverse of two, um, cross S inverse of the those guys, um, two comma x mod two uh, uh, cross S inverse of uh, R mod two comma x and uh, cross S inverse of that home, but home we decided is isomorphic to this guy. Yeah, so Q x square. Yeah. Write it that way. So this, of course, uh, S inverse of uh, this ideal two comma x is going to be. Uh, so this we saw. Yeah, as soon as uh, you invert something here, two comma x is an ideal in R. 
and you are inverting everything. So of course, two becomes a unit. So uh, so the, what you get is uh, not just an uh, a proper ideal of uh, you. You don't get a proper ideal of S inverse R. You get the whole thing. So you get S inverse R. But what is S inverse R? S inverse R is Q X. Yeah. So that so R R is uh, um, R is ZX, so you are inverting every non-zero element. So what you get is a function field of uh, ZX, which is denoted by QX. Okay. So so uh, I mean it's a, it's just a name, but you can put fac is ZX. Yeah, so you can call it K if you like. But uh, one of the standard notation is Q, QX. So what you get is this is K, uh, and the second one is similarly K. Uh, the third one is, uh, so this is K mod K, yeah, because numerator is also, so S inverse of uh, M mod N is same as S inverse of M mod S inverse of N, that also we show, yeah, so it's K mod K, so it becomes zero. Similarly, the fourth one is also K mod K, so it becomes zero. Uh, and then the fifth one is, uh, mm, uh, Plus uh, S inverse of QX uh, square, so it's further localizing. Yeah, so this also is K square. Okay. Uh, so this, uh, so this implies uh, uh, dimension of over K of S inverse and this force. So that's how you get rank is force. Okay. Any any questions about uh, about the quiz? So there are no questions. Uh, so I, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't finish the grading this time uh, before the class, but um, uh, half of you might have seen your uh, feedback. So I have graded about half of them. So uh, yeah, so I'm not sure whether I'll be able to do it today as well, but hopefully by Saturday, you'll, all of you should have your uh, scores for quiz four. Okay. Um, Okay, so if there are no questions, let me. So quiz five, uh, uh, it seems a bit too tight, yeah. So I don't want to put a quiz just before the, um, uh, just before the final exam. So we'll ju I'll just take the average of first uh, of these four quizzes. Each are of thirty points anyway. Um, the whole thing was for uh, quizzes uh, contribute thirty percent for the for the semester, so I'll just take uh, average of these four quizzes, and then um, uh, 40 for the homework, and that will be truncated to 60. Yeah, so I attached to 70, but it will be truncated to 60, and then um, uh, some 40 points for final. Okay. There, I'm planning to put out one more homework, but that won't be graded. That's just for uh, that. Summer, that is for you, yeah. So, um, so there won't be any homework to be turned in. I just want to uh, give a homework on uh, on this part, uh, which I'm covering. But uh, you don't have to turn it in. This is just for you to practice, yeah. So I suggest you do it, but uh, it's up to you uh, to turn. It. Uh, so you don't turn it in uh, because it's. Uh, so but last minute. Any any other questions? Okay. So if there are no questions, let me let me get to today's uh, lesson. So uh, so last time. Um, yeah, sorry. How do I? Applications have started there. Okay, good. Okay, so today we will talk about, uh, uh, we'll see how to use uh, structure theorem to to get uh, 
and get some results. So, uh, so last time, uh, last time meaning uh, that was Friday, we completed the proof of structure theorem. Yeah. So basically, we we had reduced uh, uh, structure theorem to this proposition. Um, you know, we said that if R is a PID and F uh, is a free module, free R module of rank N, then uh, and N is some submodule of F, then N, uh, N is a free R module of rank plus equal M, and uh, moreover, there is a basis X1 to Xn of F and A1 to AM in R cross such that A1 divides A2 divides up to AM and uh, A1 X1. Um, A2X2, AMXM is a basis of N. Yeah. And uh, using this proposition, so this was the heart of the matter, so to speak. So this was the non trivial part. And using that proposition, we had already seen structure theorem. Yeah. So, and what was the structure theorem? M is a finitely generated R module. Then M is isomorphic to R for K, the XM R mod A1 uh, uh, plus R mod A2 up to R mod AM. Where k is the rank of m and a1 to m are non zero non units such that a1 divides a2 divides m. And again, here k and m could be zero. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, the way one uses it, uh, use it is since m is finitely generated, you can find a surjection from a free module to m, and the kernel is uh, going to be a submodule, which is n of this, uh, this guy. Yeah? And then you just apply this. And so here, some of the AIs may be units, but then you, you throw them away, and you get uh, you get uh, this. So, so a reduction from proposition to structure theorem is straightforward. Proposition is uh, is the difficult part, and then uh, there is another. So I I told you there is another version of structure theorem. So I'll uh, I'll state that, and we'll show that these two are equivalent today, and then we'll go on to the applications. Okay, so uh, so what is the second version? So it's similar to there is a there are two version of structure theorem for uh, finitely generated abelian groups. So it's, uh, it's similar in that respect. Yeah. So let R be a PID and M be a finitely generated R module. Then uh, you can again write M is isomorphic to R power K plus. Uh, so here it was dx sum of cyclic modules in some sense. Yeah. And uh, this is more or less the only way you can write it as, uh, in some maximal sense, this is the only direct sum of cyclic modules, direct sum of maximal cyclic modules. Yeah. And here, you, uh, in this one, what we do is uh, try to uh, uh, isolate the irreducible factors, okay? Uh, irreducible uh, elements, so it's uh, uh, irreducible factors of AIs. Yeah. So um, another way to, uh, right M uh, is that it's uh, isomorphic to R power K. So this is the free part, yeah? So that doesn't change. And uh, the torsion part, you can write it as R mod P1 power R11, P1 power R12, P, uh, P1 power R13, up to P1 power R1 N1, and, and so on. R mod P2 power R21, and so on. Where uh, PIs are irreducible elements of R, and Rijs are you can uh, you can order them in the increasing order. Yeah. So R11 is uh, yeah. So what is my convention? Yeah. So R11 is the smallest, and then next one is R12, and so on. R1 and N1 is the largest. So some put it in decreasing order, some in increasing order. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So you can write it in uh, this way. Okay, so this is uh, this is the uh, this is the structure theorem. Yeah, Rijs are positive integers here. Okay, so not just non-negative. We don't allow zeros in here because if you put, if you want to put zero, then you may as well drop that factor. Yeah? So maybe I'll write it as um, positive integers. And has gone bad. Positive integers. Okay. So this is uh, this is the second version of structure theorem, and uh, it follows more or less immediately. It it it, it is clear that these two versions are are equivalent. So we'll show that uh, 
the two versions, version one and version two are equal. Uh, equal. So if, if you have uh, the first version, you can you can get the second version from there and, and vice versa. Okay, so uh, any any questions? Okay. No. Okay. So uh, so how do we go about it? So uh, uh, before doing this equivalent, maybe I'll I'll say a little a little bit about how it looks for integer. Maybe that's uh, so that it doesn't look very really weird. So remember, if you have a, um, so maybe in this you can think of it as a corollary. Yeah. Uh, so um, G, I said my pen is acting up. G is a finitely generated uh, um, abelian group. This is a finitely generated abelian abelian group. Then uh, what we can do? Uh, then uh, we know that G we can write it as uh, some Z power K plus uh, some. Uh, so this is the free part of the abelian group and something. Yeah. So we can write it as G mod. Uh, yeah, so I, I'll I'll just write write the same thing again. Yeah, so maybe I I shouldn't write. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So you just replace R by Z, and it's the same statement. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I should actually do an example rather than P one R power one and one and so on. Yeah. So let me not write it. So this is what uh, the, and uh, the hypothesis on P1. So P, uh, what happened? So the hypothesis hypothesis on these things P1 to PM are same as are primes. So now you can say it's prime prime numbers, prime numbers, and um, R1 to R R is R. So. So, for instance, if G is uh, so, so what is important is finite abelian groups. Yeah, the torsion free part anyway you can separate it out. So, so say G is a finite abelian group. So, for instance, uh, let's say G is um, order of G is uh, let's say uh, thirty six or something. Yeah. So there are many finite of, so this is how the, this is um, useful so if you want to and g is abelian let's say so you can say what are the possibilities for g yeah so you just write 36 is uh, what is it three square nine times four uh, two square yeah so uh, uh, so the the possibilities are z mod 4z uh, Cross uh, Z mod uh, um, Z mod nine uh, Z. So that's uh, so that uh, that tells you that. And so the number of primes is fixed. Yeah, there there are only two primes going uh, in this uh, in this in this setup, and uh, one is four and one is you know, one is two and one is three, and the exponent in this case is just uh, two of them. Yeah. So uh, so here there is only one exponent. P1 power, uh, so, R, so N1 is uh, uh, 1 and R11 is 2. And N, N2 is also 1 and R2, uh, R21 is also, also 2. Yeah, so this, uh, and, and so G, uh, G, could, uh, G could be isomorphic to this, but there are other possibilities. So let me write down the other extreme and then a mix of these two. Or the other possibilities are uh, it could be Z mod 2Z cross Z mod 2Z cross uh, Z mod 3Z cross Z mod 3Z. Yeah, so this is how. So Z mod 2Z. Uh, so here in this case, uh, N uh, um, N 
n1 is uh, n1 is 2 uh, p1 is 2 p2 is 3 p n2 is 2 and uh, r uh, 1 1 equals r 1 2 equals 1 equals uh, so even r uh, 2 1 and r 2 2 are also 1 yeah so this is what you get in in these notations yeah and so on so uh, so it may be that it's mix of these two so it's uh, z mod 2 cross z mod 2 cross z mod 9 so this is another possibility or uh, z mod 4 Plus mod three plus mod three. So any uh, any fine uh, any abelian group of a particular order, you can write it. Uh, so it has to be isomorphic to one of these things. Okay. So this is uh, one application of uh, structure theorem for for abelian groups. You can you can uh, write down all possible all possibilities in some sense, all isomorphic, uh, up to isomorphism, you can classify a finite abelian group. That's why it's called structure theory. Okay, this is how it looks like. Okay, so let's, uh, any questions? Okay, so let's uh, get to this thing. Uh, version one is equivalent to version two. So suppose you are given this uh, this version one, yeah. So you know that M is finitely generated R module and R is a PID. Then we know that M is isomorphic to this guy R bar K uh, plus this thing, and we want to prove that uh, it's also isomorphic to this guy for some irreducible uh, some P one to P M irreducible and uh, these uh, these are like this. Yeah. So what do we do? So uh, R part K part is as it is. So we only have to worry about how to transform this R mod E1, R mod E2, R mod AM to this uh, complicated, complicated looking thing. Where it's not really complicated. Uh, but before I go there, how do we write this? Uh, so for instance, uh, um, what will this be in version one? This group in version one? it would be uh, the whole yeah so this is uh, so it's actually you have to write the write it as a cyclic group yeah so this is already um, these two are co-prime so it, it is a it it happens to be cyclic yeah so this is this is a z mod 36 yeah so this is uh, this is the uh, this is the if g is isomorphic to this then in terms of uh, so if you want to write it as uh, version one, um, no, it's, it's just Z mod 36. So this is isomorphic to Z mod 36. So this, this agrees, yeah? And uh, how about this one? In version one? So the Z mod 60 cross Z mod 60. Yeah, so this is Z mod 60. So you want uh, A1, A2, and so on, such that A1 device, A2 device, AM. Yeah, so this is, uh, so we will see the recipe anyway. So let me just write it down here. Um, yeah, so maybe I shouldn't have written because I want to write uh, below this. So I'll just write it here. So, so for this one, second one, this is Z, Z mod 60 plus Z mod 60. In, in in version one and uh, this one in version one what is it uh, z mod 2z cross z mod 18z yeah so z mod so the first factor should be uh, should divide uh, i mean the denominator of the first factor should divide the denominator of the second part z mod 18z okay and uh, for this one it's uh, um, Z mod 3Z cross Z mod 12Z. So we'll uh, we'll see uh, uh, both ways going from one to another. Um, so let's do that. Yeah. So what you do is uh, you write a prime factorization of uh, AM. Yeah. 
or uh, uh, irreducible factor. So we are in PIT, yeah. So you can everything as a unique irreducible factorizer up to associate. Yeah. So you can write AM to be P1 for R11, P2 for R21, up to PM for RM1, where RIs are some positive integers. Yeah? So maybe R IJ greater or equal. Uh, actually, R one J you can say is greater, strictly greater than one, greater equal one. Because uh, why would you take otherwise? Yeah. So R one J greater equal one. J between one and one. Okay. Then E M minus one is a divisor of E M. Yeah. So if you want to write it as product of so up to a unit. So I'm dropping the unit here. Yeah. So one should put a unit here. So maybe one, uh, either you put a unit or you, uh, you can say, um, so maybe I'll just write up to unit. So or you can put the associate symbol. So up to unit. Okay, something so much. I hope it's reasonably visible. Yeah, so AM minus one is going to be P1 power some factorization you can do, but in terms of P. you are muted yeah. huh. sorry so th thanks for screen is also not being shared sir. what happened and it's not being recorded huh? uh, recording is going on huh, recording is going on okay okay Good. Sorry about that. So, uh, so version one and version two are. Uh, um, so, as I said, we, we'll take the factorization of AM, AM minus one, A two, and A one, and uh, this is uh, uh, we we take the irreducible factorization. And the fact that AM minus one divides AM tells us that uh, there has to be only these prime factors, P one to P M, and also tells us that R one two has to be smaller than R one one. R R22 has to be smaller than R21, not strictly smaller, but smaller. Yeah, so it could be equal, and so on. So if you do this, uh, then uh, this condition AJ divides AJ plus one gives you that RI M minus J plus one is less equals RI M minus J. Okay, and uh, and uh, and and note that some of these RIJs may be zero. Yeah, 
So now you get that R mod AM is I. So what is R mod AM? And now you use uh, so uh, is isomorphic to R mod uh, P1 power R11 plus R mod PM power RM1. Yeah. Why is this? How does this follow? So from Chinese remainder theorem. Yeah. So here PIs are distinct irreducible factors. Yeah. So by Chinese remainder theorem, this follows. Yeah. Since uh, uh, PI for uh, R1I, comma PJ for R1J, uh, the GCD is one if I is not equal to J. Yeah. So, so they are co-maximal, so to speak. Yeah. So you can uh, you can apply Chinese remainder theorem, and uh, we get that uh, this is isomorphic to this, and then you rearrange. Now, uh, I rearrange. So what we get is, uh, um, is uh, so what we get is. Uh, uh, so this isomorphism, and since M is isomorphic to R power K, there's some. So this is not just true for AM, but even for AM minus one and so on, you get the same isomorphism. R mod A, A1 to R mod AM. You get that um, this, is, um, this is isomorphic to R mod R. Okay, and uh, this will be R mod uh, um, P1. Uh, so I'll write it in the reverse order. Yeah. So first uh, the factors for uh, R mod AM and then the factors for R mod AM minus one and so on. R M one, not M minus one, plus uh, R mod uh, P one power R. Uh, so M for M minus one is R one two, yeah. R one two. The exam. Maybe I should have written the second one for clarity. Uh, P2 power R22. So I'll write here at least P2 power R22. Um, yeah, so this would have been uh, R mod P2 power R. Maybe I'll write it here P2 power R21. Uh, yeah, and so on. Up to R, the exam of R mod PM power R M2. Okay. And uh, this goes up to R mod uh, E1 power. Uh, uh, so, so the for A1, it is P1 power R1 M. Yeah. So it's at uh, 1 to M, it has to go. Yeah? So, so for A1, it is R mod P1 power R1 uh, M. Take some R mod P2 power R2 uh, M up to R mod P M power R uh, M M. Yeah. So now, uh, what uh, uh, what uh, in this version two is that uh, this uh, these rows are written like columns. Yeah, that is the only difference. P one for R one one. So all the P ones are written in in one one row, and P two is in second row, and P three is in third row, and so on. Yeah. So if you write all these P ones in the in one row, all these P twos in the second row, and all these P threes in the third row. Instead of writing it in column, you'll get that version. Except that uh, here you have up going up to one m, yeah, r one m. All all of them goes to r two m. It all goes all the way to m, 
yeah, instead of N1, N2, and so on. But remember, some of these RIs may be zero. Yeah. So R, R, R1M. So. Um, yeah. Okay, I don't know what happened. Yeah. So note, um, note that uh, R1M uh, may be zero. R1M, R2M, etc. May be zero. May be zero. Yeah. So last few uh, last few terms in this uh, in this uh, column in the first column maybe maybe um, maybe zero. Uh, so uh, 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 the quotient may be the zero. So if R one M is zero, that means this quotient is the zero ring. Yeah. So you can forget about it. R1 M is zero, that means P1 power uh, zero, which is uh, by convention is the whole ring. Okay. So first few terms may be zero and uh, so on. Similarly, in the second column, the last, uh, la sorry, not last few terms may be zero and so on. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, right, maybe I'll, I'll use the matrix uh, term, write the transpose. and ignore the uh, terms uh, when rij R I J is zero to obtain portion two. Transpose of above and ignore the terms where R I J S are zero to obtain version two. Okay, is this clear? Yeah. So you know what we are trying to do to get version two from version one. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, this is clear. Okay, and uh, to get the other way is also sort of uh, difficult. So, um, uh, so from version one to version, uh, from version two to version one. So the, what we have shown so far is version one implies version two. Now version two implies version one is also straightforward so so now we remember version one means we have this kind of factorization yeah and we want to get uh, a1 to am and such that uh, this this isomorphism holds yeah and e1 divides a2 divides am uh, so how what will we do we'll look at this uh, first column yeah so in this first column, all these PIs are, of course, distinct. So PI power R11 is going to be co-maximal to P2 power R21 and so on. So these will be pairwise co-maximal. And uh, which one is biggest? Uh, so we are going in Rij is uh, bigger than Rij minus one. Ah, so last one is the biggest, yeah. So first we'll combine the in these guys, yeah. And uh, what we'll get is the amth factor, yeah. And if we combine these guys, then we'll get the a one factor, okay. And uh, yeah, so I think this is okay. So uh, so we'll we'll start with. Uh, um, I'm making some mistake here. Yeah, so somehow amth factor, yeah, so we'll have to start with, from the right hand side. Yeah, so, so, so somehow it's, uh, yeah, so it's, so maybe I'll explain a little bit. So we want the maximal guys to be in the am factor. Yeah, so somewhere this notation is going to be complicated. Okay, so what you do is, so, so though I've written it in somewhat uh, weird way, what, uh, so I'll, I'll write it in a, 
so we'll pad it, pad it on the left with zeros so that everything uh, becomes uh, fine. Yeah. So, so say version two is given to us. So m is uh, m is isomorphic to R power k. I mean, uh, uh, conceptually it's simpler. Writing it is uh, is a bit messy, but let me just try to do this. Yeah. So. Uh, so uh, R mod uh, P1 for R11 up to R mod P1 for R1N1, yeah, and so on. R mod PM for R uh, M1 take some R mod PM for R um, M NM. Yeah, so where NM, N1, N, N2, NM are some positive integers. Yeah, and uh, RIJs are also some integers, and we have the relation that RIJ is uh, greater or equal to RIJ minus one. Yeah, so. Uh, so these rijs are in r um, r i um, uh, r i j is uh, is increasing. So r i j is greater or equal r i uh, r i j minus one. Yeah. Okay. So this is what we have. So what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll pad it up uh, uh, pad it up with zeros on the left if uh, if somehow uh, these ni's are not uh, so ni's may not be seen yeah so what you do is uh, take the maximum of these ni's and uh, uh, so let uh, maybe um, Um, yeah, so let uh, um, L equals uh, maximum of a nice. Yeah, then uh, what you do is uh, so somehow this L should be equal to M, uh, but uh, Maybe I don't need it. So what I'll do is uh, uh, you just uh, you just put uh, put it like R one uh, R mod uh, P one power N one. So you write I'm sorry the exam doesn't matter R mod P one power R one one and here you put some zeros so that uh, the number of columns uh, number of uh, yeah, the number of columns is precisely L. Yeah. And similarly, the second one, R mod uh, P2 power R1, R2, N2. And uh, so it will depend where the first one will come. It could come here or it could, it could, it could come there, depending upon how things are. R to one, and then maybe put zeros here, yeah. And uh, R mod P3 for R3 and three, the exam, and maybe this one goes somewhere here, R power P3 for R31, depending upon how big N3 is with respect to L, yeah, and then zeros here. So it may happen that there is no zero because if if uh, the maximum is actually attained for some some uh, k, then in that uh, jth uh, row there won't be any zeros, and so on. Yeah, R mod P M R uh, M N M R mod P M R M one and uh, then some zeros. 
possibly some zeros here. Okay. Now what you do is uh, con consider these columns. Yeah. So let em be the product of these guys. So if you look at this column and uh, look at the dx sum of this last column. Yeah. So uh, uh, so maybe I'll circle this. So you you look at this last column, take the direct sum of these last column and uh, declare AM to be P1 for R1, N1, R1, N1, direct sum uh, product uh, P2 for R2, N2, up to PM for RM, NM. Uh, uh, and AM minus one to be P1 power R1, N1 minus one, the previous term, P2 power R2, N2 minus one, and so on. So I could have just written this formula, but uh, then maybe it would have made less sense, and so on. Yeah, so you go on, and uh, similarly, A1 to be P1 power R1 and 1 minus, uh, uh, how much should I put? Fine. So if I put 1 here, then uh, N1 minus 1 here. So 1 here, so M minus, minus M plus 1. So this may be negative. N1 minus M plus 1 may be negative. And if it is negative, the convention is, uh, is that it's zero. Yeah. P2, R sub, R sub one, and the second component is negative, means the convention is zero. Yeah. R2, um, N2 minus M plus one. And so, PM, RM. Uh, and minus m plus one. Okay, and uh, so this last column is going to be isomorphic to R mod AM. Yeah, by Chinese remainder theorem again because P one uh, these are uh, co uh, co maximal uh, the denominators here. The these P one power R one N one is uh, and the P two power R two N two are uh, co maximal and so on. So these are pairwise co maximal. So this is going to be isomorphic to R mod AM. The second uh, column, uh, if you take the direct sum of second column, you'll get P1, uh, uh, R mod AM minus one and so on. So, uh, so from here, you get that, uh, um, so maybe I should have written this as isomorphic, so M is isomorphic to R power K plus this guy with uh, rewriting it this way. And now, since this is isomorphic to this, we get uh, M is isomorphic to R for K plus R mod A1. So here we are using again CRT now for this step. There's um, R mod A1. And uh, since, uh, since these fact, uh, so R1, N1 is bigger than, um, um, R1, N1 minus one. So the, uh, so P1 power R1, N1 uh, will be divisible by P1 power R1, N1 minus one and so on. So uh, also uh, conditions, uh, this condition which I've written somewhere. Yeah, this Rij is greater equal Rij minus one and so. Um, uh, condition Rij is greater or equal Rij minus one implies A one divides A two divides. Okay. Okay, and uh, maybe I, I'll just add this uh, uh, convention as uh, convention. In, in in this in this expression the convention is ri 
j is zero if j is uh, less equal to zero. Okay. So uh, so um, here the this exponent is r one comma n one minus m plus one. So as I said, that may be negative. So if it uh, r r zero, then, then you just take it to be mm, that number to be zero. Okay, and then this formula works. Any questions? Okay, so this completes the so so basically it's Chinese remainder theorem and rearranging terms. Okay, so this uh, this completes the proof of uh, the, the fact that the two versions are same. Yeah. Okay, so maybe we'll take a short break. Um, and then uh, uh, we'll meet at uh, 12, uh, 12, 10, and uh, then I'll discuss uh, uh, Jordan form and uh, uh, rational form and Jordan form a little. I'll start the discussion and maybe we'll hopefully complete it uh, next class tomorrow. Yeah. Sir, can you scroll down a little bit? Yeah. Is this okay? So let me pause. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And move this also. So. And this, this floating thing went away. You know how to get back the controls? Zoom controls? I can't see the zoom controls on my thing now. Uh, have you tried clicking escape once? Ah, okay. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so I'll pause and we'll meet in uh, meet at uh, 12, 12, 11, 12, 12, something like that. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I want to uh, apply. So, the main uh, aim of this uh, structure theorem was to um, apply it to get this rational form and Jordan form of uh, a linear transformation. So what you need is the structure for, for uh, structure theorem for this. Yeah. So that's why I've copied this, and uh, we'll use this to. Uh, so maybe uh, actually I'll use uh, theorem. Uh, so we'll, we'll start with uh, maybe rational form, and for that you need version one of the structure theorem, and for Jordan form you need the second version. Yeah. So let me. Today we'll do the rational form. Okay. So what? Uh, so uh, so what? What is the rational form? So if you are given a matrix, uh, then uh, you can write it in some rational form. Yeah. So what? So what? Let's just recall. So recall. Uh, so A is some uh, matrix. O n cross n matrix over a field k, k a field, yeah. Then uh, 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 so, uh, you can write a as uh, so, meaning a is similar to, so a is similar to uh, some matrix of this form, yeah. Um, so how do you write it? Maybe R A one to R A M, where uh, R E I is uh, um, yeah. So. Uh, so AIs are some polynomials. AI is, uh, I don't know, maybe. Um, so I have to write some some polynomials. So uh, yeah, so X power, so degree NI, let's say, X power NI plus, uh, so, um, and I can do a monic polynomial though that is not important, but anyway, B, B Ni minus one, X power Ni minus one, plus uh, B, B one, X power one plus B zero. 
Yeah, so this is what, uh, uh, so I haven't really said what, uh, what the RIs, RIs are. So RIA, uh, RAI is the matrix uh, of the form. So, uh, so it varies, maybe some people have slightly different convention, but I think this is fairly standard. Yeah. So zeros in the diagonal, except the last diagonal, and just below the zero, there is one. Yeah. One and the last diagonal is uh, what is it? So it uh, it depends on this polynomial essentially. So I think it's minus b zero, minus. Uh, so even if I get this formula a little off, when we do the proof, we'll get it right. Yeah, zero up to minus b n i minus one. Um, so I saw written it in a. So let me just. Uh, I'm tuning this pen. Pen first of all, it's too thick. Minus b slightly minus b n i minus one. Yeah. So it's uh, this is a, a n i cross n i matrix. Okay, and the rest of the entries are zero. Yeah, so wherever nothing is mentioned is zero. Yeah, so this is, so everyone remembers this, yeah? Uh, the rational form which you learned in, uh, hopefully in linear algebra. Yeah, is, the, is this familiar to everyone? Have you seen this? Is there anyone who hasn't seen it? Okay, so what it, uh, so I, I'm going to assume that uh, all of you have seen the rational form, so to speak, yeah? So if you have any questions, uh, this is the right time to ask about rational form. Yeah, so this is how it looks like. And uh, basically, so similar means that there exists uh, P um, non-singular such that, uh, so I think uh, this is not this was not done in our linear algebra course. Yes, yes sir. no one has seen it. Most probably uh, officially. Oh, the rational form and Jordan form was not done. Uh, no, no sir. sir. Oh, okay. So so they then take it as a statement, yeah. So uh, maybe let's call so let's forget recall. Let's call it theorem. Yeah. Um, okay. So we will prove it anyway. Yeah. And uh, so at least the statement I thought would be there. So I taught it uh, last time and uh, I had uh, put the statement when um, they discussed the proof as well. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So given any matrix of this form in the matrix uh, setup, you can write it, uh, uh, then you can say that A is similar to a matrix, a block diagonal matrix of this form where the, the uh, these uh, and these block matrices of this are of this type yeah so in particular summation ni so summation ni is going to be n okay so this is what uh, this is what uh, um, rational form of a matrix looks like okay So uh, I mean, uh, maybe in uh, in linear algebra, uh, this uh, this is stated only for maybe R or C or some uh, cube or something like that. But uh, this works for any field. Yeah. So the proof doesn't use anything other than um, the fact that K is a field. Okay. So how would you how would you do this? So. Uh, so maybe I'll I'll sketch out uh, today and then tomorrow I'll do it uh, and do it in a better way. Yeah. So this is more like a, uh, so I thought you would have done it, so I I would have done it a little faster. But uh, so today I'll just. Uh, so, but uh, I mean the hard work we have already done the structure theorem. The rest is uh, just uh, writing it down. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's no new idea, so to speak. So, so if you are given a matrix A, what does it mean? Uh, N cross N matrix, it defines a map from, um, from Kn to K, Kn, yeah? 
So it's a it's a linear map from Kn to Kn. K defines a linear map yeah, from Kn to Kn. Let's call uh, so I don't like uh, writing Kn, so I'll I'll just call it V. Yeah, so A is a linear map from V to V, and V is a K module. Yeah, or a K vector space. Same thing. So whenever you have a linear map from uh, uh, from a uh, from a key, uh, from a mod uh, on a, a endomorphism of a module, a linear map. So this is k linear. So this is same as uh, so you can uh, consider V as a kx sub module. Yeah. So this this gives V a uh, kx module structure. Where kx is the polynomial ring over k. Yeah. So, and how does it give a kx module structure? So, um, via, so it's very explicit v in v, and then x dot v is ab. Yeah. That is what uh, this kx module structure is. And uh, uh, so, in general, in general, uh, fx dot v is just uh, you. So fx fx uh, fx some polynomial in kx. So a n x power n plus a a one x plus a zero is uh, you just evaluate it uh, at a f a v, which is so to speak uh, uh, a n times a power n, a n is a scalar. So if you like a n times identity, if you like, uh, uh, if you want, but uh, it doesn't matter, yeah? Plus uh, a one times a plus a zero times identity. And then you uh, multiply with this v. Yeah, so it, it is an endomorphism, so you apply it to v if you like that way. Or uh, if you are thinking of v as a column vector, you just multiply. Uh, matrix multiple. So this is how you give uh, kx module structure to V. And what can you say about uh, this module structure? So so kx uh, so now kx is a PID. Yeah. So we we can apply structure theorem. Kx is a PID. And uh, V is uh, V is in fact a finite dimensional vector space. So of course as a k k module itself is finitely generated. Um, uh, uh, so of course it is also kx module uh, kx finitely generated and uh, v is finitely generated kx module so it's it's more than that it's it's uh, finitely generated as a k module itself so the same set of generators will work yeah and uh, so what can you say about uh, for, for so to apply structure theorem you want to know what is rank of v so what is rank of V as a KX module? Yeah, any guesses? So will we need the minimal polynomial of KX? Yeah. yeah, so for instance, if you take the minimal polynomial of A, yeah, then the minimal polynomial of A, uh, so if MA is the minimal polynomial of A, this belongs to KX, and what does it happen, uh, what happens if we uh, apply the minimal polynomial of A to some, uh, so if we look at this action, this is, by definition it is MAAA applied to V, yeah? which is of course zero, right? Because, uh, so this is uh, maybe, so here, uh, so uh, I mean, we don't need this uh, Kelly Hamilton uh, for this one, but uh, but since we have it, we may as well use it. So uh, this is, uh, uh, you can prove this, uh, you can do this in a milder form because somehow you would uh, you want some polynomial some non zero polynomial to kill v kill uh, everything yeah? 
so uh, but uh, we all, we know not just the uh, just some thing but minimal polynomial or the characteristic polynomial ah, so we are doing the minimal polynomial not characteristic polynomial ah, so so yeah so minimal polynomial exists for every every yeah so um, anyway so what we get so this implies that v is torsion torsion kx module yeah so the rank is uh, rank is zero so the structure theorem says that we can find a1 to am such that um, v is isomorphic to r mod a1 to r mod am yeah. so by structure theorem v is isomorphic to r mod a1 direct sum r mod uh, am as R modules where you know, so that where did R came from suddenly yeah? so everyone would be wondering so R is kx yeah R is RPID so what do we know about and a1 a1 divides a2 divides a yeah. yeah so in fact uh, here also in this uh, in this uh, uh, rational form you can assert that a1 divides a2 divides a yeah. So this is so uh, so rational form is in some sense unique, yeah. Um, yes, so uh, I mean, uh, uh, so if you uh, insist that AI is harmonic, then then it is it is unique. So uh, then the, uh, you can't change AI is up to associate in some sense, yeah. So uh, so once you have this, then uh, uh, and then how do you get uh, that? Uh, uh, you can get the irrational form. So once you have this, what what are AIs? AIs are elements of uh, of this link R, which is Kx. Yeah. So AIs are polynomial. May assume we may assume AIs are monic. Yeah. Because if it is not monic, you divide by the leading coefficient, and um, still these conditions will hold. Yeah, so anyway, AIs we had to take up to associate. So if we assume that AIs are monic, then it's not just up to associate, it's up to uh, up to the dot, yeah? Two monic polynomials are associate if and only if they are equal. Okay, now we, uh, where does this uh, this thing comes from, the rational form? So remember this, this matrix A is with respect to some basis, yeah? So, uh, so, uh, a, is a, a gives you a linear map from V to V, and if you take a particular basis, so if V is Kn, then if you take E1, E2, e En as your basis, then you get the matrix A. If I take some different basis, then I'll get a, uh, get a matrix which is going to be similar to A, yeah? So now that is what we'll do here, yeah? So, so what we'll do is, uh, so how does, uh, uh, um, you know, so uh, so how does a x uh, a dot v is uh, is same as um, is equal to x dot v yeah that that was the convention yes yeah? that is how we think of uh, v as an rx module and v is isomorphic to this so i'll choose a basis of the right hand side and uh, that will give me a basis of v yeah so so choose uh, choose the basis so r mod a1 how does it look like so we just saw uh, if you take uh, zx mod uh, x square minus one our basis is one comma x yeah so similarly ax mod uh, a1 uh, a1x let's say so more explicitly where a1x maybe i'll just write down um so did i have some convention here yeah, so AMX for that I had used this uh, notation. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so anyway, it's, uh, so AIX, let's just do the general one. Um, AIX uh, by convention is x power n plus ni plus b ni mi minus one x power n ni minus one up to b zero. Yeah, so this is our polynomial. So this uh, 
this is um, uh, this has a basis so this is uh, isomorphic as kx module to k plus uh, uh, kx uh, bar plus uh, k x bar square up to k x bar n i minus one x bar n i minus one bar yeah so what are the basis i'm going to choose is one x bar x bar square x bar cube and so on x bar power n i minus one for for r mod e1 yeah so this is for r mod e1 uh, ai r mod ai yeah and then i can do that for each of these factors yeah so i'll have a um and so i'll have a so this uh, this bar is a is a misleading notation so maybe I'll, I'll fix it later but uh, since i told you i'll give you just the idea so notation wise i'll have to fix it so you get a new set of bases yeah r mod e1 you'll get a basis of length n1 minus 1 uh, of length n1 1 x bar x x bar x bar square up to x bar power n1 minus 1 uh, r mod e2 you'll get a new basis and so on okay and uh, this is the new basis and uh, you want to write down the matrix of uh, matrix of this linear transformation a with respect to this new basis yeah? so what is what is the matrix of uh, this linear map uh, of uh, which also we denoted by a of a by with respect to this new basis with respect to uh, this new basis b so this is uh, a bunch of a bunch of more things yeah so here also something and uh, so I'll, i've written a middle term somehow yeah no, with respect to p so what happens so if you multiply by x in uh, so uh, so i mean um, multiplying by x is component wise multiplication in this right hand side yeah so uh, so there won't be any uh, no. so if you multiply by x uh, what happens is uh, on this e on this each factor uh, x dot 1 becomes uh, x yeah so if you want to write it in terms of uh, this factor it uh, uh, you'll write it as 0 times 1 plus uh, 1 times x bar uh, plus uh, 0 times x bar square and so on yeah so you'll get uh, uh, 1 in the second term yeah so, so I just assume there was only one factor r mod a1 yeah r mod a if we do that case then we are done with the rest of the case yeah so you get this uh, uh, x more x times x bar is just uh, x bar square which is same as uh, 0 dot 1 0 dot x bar so i'm rewriting it as uh, in the in the vector uh, in this form so that i can write down the matrix of this linear transformation and so on up to x dot x bar power n minus 1 uh, is x bar power um, uh, n minus 2 less 2 because n minus 1 is a special case x bar power n minus 1 which again is 0 dot uh, 1 plus uh, 0 dot x bar all the terms will be 0 except the last one in this case 0 dot x bar power n minus 2 plus 1 dot x bar power n minus 1 n minus 1 yeah and then x dot x bar power n minus 1 is uh, x power n x bar power n and how do you write x bar power n well by by this uh, so this uh, ai is, is zero so x bar power n is same as uh, linear combination of these bi's yeah so what you get is minus um, b0 minus uh, by minus b0 dot 1 minus uh, b1 dot x bar uh, plus uh, minus b2 for the x bar square and so on yeah and now you you write down the matrix so how do you write down the matrix you uh, you just put these numbers yeah 
So you put this as a call. Um, the first n uh, entries of the first row is in the first column. So zero one zero zero zero. Then you get zero one zero zero zero, and so on. So all the, all the, all of them zeros, and below them there is one. And then in the last column you get uh, this guy minus b zero. Yeah, so I had it right minus b one up to minus b n minus one. Yeah. So this is the matrix of uh, of A. If you take this as the basis, and there was only one term, and if there are more than one term, instead of R mod A uh, one, if there are more than R, uh, R mod A one, R mod A two, then uh, these factors are invariant. Yeah. So you get the block diagonal matrix. Okay. So that's roughly the idea. Okay. So sorry for going over, and uh, maybe I should have postponed it for next class anyway. But uh, you'll understand better tomorrow. I'll just uh, sort of do it in a more detailed way next time. Okay. So, so maybe stop recording.